Hello, this is Scope January number 30, and this time it was vehicle. And I chose to do a futuristic space hover bike. Okay, I'm getting a basic shape with just normal primitives for the most part, and then extruding them and adding loop cuts and subdividing them. I also use some metals there as well. I did a quick sketch, so I had a rough idea of what I was going to do. I think it's really tough to just go completely freeform. Obviously my sketch is really rubbish, uh, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm going for. When you do this, I think it's uh, best with your primitives to make sure you subdivide them lots and get them ready for sculpting. That way when you go to the die and topo, it won't distort the mesh too much. I'm also doing something slightly different, that I'm keeping the objects separate so I can sculpt them individually. I thought I'd give that a go. I did actually join them in the end just because it's quicker to UV unwrapping things and add the textures, but I think if I were doing this properly I might keep them separate and then unwrap them and put them on the same texture. It does make it easier to texture as well because then you can select different parts. Okay, so I've got the basics down and now I'm moving it all around. I'm still getting used to hard surface modeling. It's still very tough and someone said on my channel the other day, why don't you just model it with primitives and just like box modeling. And in some ways I think they're quite right. I'm probably so slow at the hard surface modeling at the moment that it might be a bit faster if I were just box modeling and pulling and extruding and loop cutting and so forth. But I really do like this workflow because you can be a bit more imaginative, it feels like, and just pull lines down, see how they look, get rid of them, squash and pull things around. Which is exactly what I'm doing here. Just adding bits in making panels and different things like that. Of course, if this was going to production, you certainly would re-topologize anyway, so you would have to go back to box modeling style, but at least you've got a, a mesh to snap to and build from. So it'll become much quicker and it'll just be a re-topology exercise. I need to get used to more re-topology actually, so that's probably something I'm gonna do over the next few months. I kept this one on relative detail, so moving in with my brush was adding more detail. And actually with the hard surface modeling, I think I prefer that approach rather than constant detail. Especially when you're using the subdivide edges rather than collapse edges. And that's really important when you're doing your pinching and creasing when you're going to that fine detail. It's not a good idea to do that too early though. I thought it didn't look right without a chair on there, so I thought I'd quickly put one of those up. Just to mark out where it would go, and then I'll complete it a bit later when I go to the next detail level. It took a long time, this one. Uh, a good six hours. I knew this was going to take a while. 
Uh, luckily it's my day away from college so I could spend a bit of time on it. And it was good fun. Still learning a lot and still getting used to those techniques of uh, pinching and polishing and creasing. Sometimes the brushes didn't always behave in the way I expected and I have even been just practicing on sort of spheres and things with brush techniques to try and get a good idea of how to build these things with hard surface modelling. I also think that this sort of workflow is going to be the future because as computers get more powerful it is kind of an easier way to model for artists. So there will probably become a time where we don't even need to bake out to normal maps, we can just build models like this and they'll work in games. Retopology tools are getting a lot faster as well. And so box modelling, of course it will still have its place, but if you want to do really complex models, uh, then I imagine it's going to be a sculpting workflow that's a lot faster. I had lots of different reference images again and using pure ref again. I mainly looked at people's artwork uh, for sort of these hover bikes and things but I'm also looking at motorbikes in general. I used a trike seat for the actual seat. I probably should have had more reference images but it just takes time to go through them and sift through them looking for things that you like. So you can see with the relative detail, as I move in, uh, the detail level gets much higher. I put it back to collapse edges whenever I needed to simplify the topology. and I'm just trying to flatten out a few areas now because they're a bit lumpy. But that is one thing I've struggled with, is getting away from lumpiness. Especially when I go across to a metallic met cap like this, you can really see uh, the lumps and bumps in the mesh. It might be the case that when retopologizing, uh, that would take them out, but I feel like I ought to be able to get closer with the actual sculpt especially if I wanted to retopologize and then use this as a base for my normal maps. Because it'd be nice to add things like scratches and scuffs and all sorts of details like nuts and bolts and things. You can see in areas like this it's uh, getting quite tough to get those lumps out and the creases on the edges. This is close to my final level of detail. I didn't really like the bit I just filled in there. And I went back to subdivide collapse for that. I forgot I had it on and I kept <laughs> scrubbing over it thinking why is it still so detailed. Someone's asked me to do a tutorial about things like the brushes and uh, basics of sculpting which I'll certainly do. I'm 
so I'm getting close to a point that I'm reasonably comfortable and trying to go in and refine the shape a bit more. And I think this is where hard surface modeling gets the most tricky. When you're trying to sharpen all your edges and flatten everything out. I was experimenting with different techniques for the panels and in the end I finally came up with something that I was pleased with to a degree and that was because I had it on relative detail I could go right in and just add quite a lot of topology. I was worried to do that and scared to do that at first because I thought it would just overload the computer but I was still on quite a low amount of poly so I didn't really need to worry and I just decided to get right in there and pull it around. So I think I'm on my final level of detail now and you can see uh, smarten things up and getting close in to refine all the edges. There's some bits that I kind of left just because I was running out of time. I used the grab tool a fair bit just at the end here just to tidy up the lumpiness and try and straighten things out but I'm not sure that's the best way of doing things. It worked for me just to refine the edges and lumps. Maybe I should have done it a bit sooner before going to this detail level. I suppose that's something that comes with experience and practice, knowing when to use certain tools and the right time for things, and that would certainly speed up my workflow. So you can see now I've brought out the pinch brush. I think sometimes in the past I've brought this out a bit too early. But you can see it really does sharpen your edges nicely, but if there's any lumpiness in them or wobble in them, it seems to highlight it. So you really have to make sure your edges are nice and clean in terms of direction and line. And then the pinch brush will pull them together nicely. If you go nice and close in, you can get away with a bit of wobble. And then you zoom out and it's not too bad. You can see I'm using the grab brush here in combination with the crease brush to try and refine the edges. And this is where I go right in to just separate the panels out. And it doesn't look too bad. Those bits seem fairly successful. It was the bigger areas that needed sorting out more, where there's lumps and bumps in the meshes. I did kind of say this was finished a bit too early, I think. There's lots more that could have been done to this mesh. But I was quite a long time into this and thought I really need to move on, because I've still got a video to make. It's kind of handy to have the image on the top right corner showing my progress. I put that there just for the sake of the video, but actually I keep referring to that and looking to that, thinking what will it look like from a distance and am I doing the right thing with the shapes. So it's kind of useful having that up in the corner. It's a very enjoyable workflow this, because you really see the shapes emerging and the crisp details coming out, but it is time consuming. But it's certainly a nice bit of the project to get to. And if I had more time then I'd find it probably quite relaxing. I'm 
still figuring out a little what to do in the coming months and how much time to spend on things because it has been quite exhausting but it has been incredibly satisfying and useful for my development. So I might do some animation ones, art ones and maybe even things like topology, just do a topology of each of these models perhaps every day, something like that, just to keep my development going. So I bake out all the maps as usual and put them together in the normal way. And that's it, number 30, vehicle, one more to go. Thank you ever so much for all the comments, really appreciated, and the advice as well. Someone gave me some excellent advice the other day about looking at uh, Zacharias Reinhardt's uh, tutorial about uh, meshes, uh, which would have come in handy for my earlier models, certainly. So very useful, get along to Sculpt January as well, links in the description. I'll see you there.